right everybody welcome back to the channel i am your boy dre happy sunday to you and we are about to get it in again here and another x plane 12 stream so appreciate you guys uh checking in hope everybody's been doing well uh since then or since the last stream which was just a few days ago and uh we are here in raleigh durham north carolina and uh we are flying real time so you can see the cars and the highway off in the distance and the lights and i've been asked by one of the homies have i done a lot of night flying in x 12 and i said actually no so i figure what better uh time to do real world flying time here on the east coast uh since it's hard, the sun is already setting um and head up to boston from north carolina so that's what we're gonna do uh, so I most certainly 100% appreciate you guys uh, checking your boy out here and we about to get into it y'all without question we about to get into it um, we are on the VATSIM network so as I slowly get the plane ready if anybody wants to load up and you're at your computer and you're ready to go again we're at Raleigh Durham I'm at gate uh, Delta 3 we will be arriving to Boston landing at gate Alpha 6 regardless of what happens during the flight hopefully we get it right um so and based off of my previous airbus flights i always need to practice more in the airbus simply because you know um she's not the easiest to land sometimes with that side stick to get the flare right so you don't get the hard touchdown so that's what we're gonna try to do guys that's what we're gonna try to do so welcome aboard delta airlines flight 318 Pulls non-stop service to Boston Logan, so you guys know what we gotta do. Let's get on, and you can see she is all dark, so we need to bring this bad boy for sure, for sure, to life. Now, if you guys who don't aren't explain users, look at oh, I can't see anything. Don't worry about it. First, before you can start it up, you can definitely get your aviation flashlight on, which helps significantly for you to bring the aircraft up. Uh, so let's get the batteries on up top and get some lighting going on here. All right, so those batteries are on and we can accept the external power. And then of course you see everything starts basically coming to life. While we're up here as well, we might as well get our IRSs going, get those juices flowing. Let's arm our emergency light there and of course let's get our nav and logo on um, so that we've got uh, some markers on the aircraft uh, and there we go now you can see these joints are providing the self-test so we can turn the aviation flashlight off so thank you dear lord for waking me up today and my family and blessing me so thank you dear lord for that big up to my wife and kids who are always on deck you know whether they want to or not they're always there with a smile so thank you lovely family for supporting me and my youtube channel as always and let's get this thing up and jumped off the right way now we can go ahead and align on our reference point yes of course we're going to finish the rest of this here in a second let me turn down la musica slightly but we won't turn it off since we don't have any atc here at the present moment we'll just make the music a little bit lighter on the ears so that uh we don't have to fight with what i'm saying until we take off so hopefully that's uh sufficient once again welcome aboard guys and let's get this thing ready to go of course we'll need to uh definitely pull in some of our aids here so let's uh go ahead and get our flight plan up so that i can observe it Got our briefing overview, <clears throat> and what I like what Tolis did, you used to have to do everything in kilograms, but now it's in pounds, so I did the flight plan in pounds, so we'll be looking for 16,000 pounds of fuel, that includes 1,000 pounds of extra fuel on board. Uh, flight number, as you guys know, is Delta Airlines 318, we'll finish this part up, and then we'll do the plane loading. Cost index is 75. And our cruising altitude this evening is going to be flight level 350. Now beyond that, what you want to do is go ahead and bring in the 
ISS screen here so you can load the aircraft appropriately so that we can finish the initialization page which is what the init stands for. Um, I did say that we are looking for 16,000 pounds of fuel at the minimum. So let's do 16, maybe 2. Okay. And then we're running with 100. I believe we loaded 160 in the flight plan. So we're going to load the passengers here. It's the thing that sucks about these sliders. It's like you got to move it just an inch or so. Um, and uh, there we go. 160. The cargo weight that we are looking for as far as the bays being filled up. Let's get down to that. Okay, cargoes, they want a uh, full cargo load of 14,800 pounds. Yes, yeah, so 160 passengers, fuel 16.1. We got 16.2, so let's get that cargo. We're going to call the cargo at 12, so we're just going to slide this over them. Poquitito. I will leave that at 6,200 since we're going lower than what they're asking for anyway. So everything is a normal range there. I like the distribution of everything. So we are most certainly looking good. And you can see here what the flight center gravity limits are. So the blue shouldn't exceed that. The red, sh you know, really shouldn't exceed this dotted line. But if it does, for sure that line. And then of course the black here you can see is the takeoff center gravity limits, which we're all in. And you can see there's a curve there. And you can see that we are all good to go. So I like the values here. 12,200 pounds of cargo. 160 packs. 16,200 pounds of fuel. So let's load these. There we go. So that is all loaded up. And we can come up and check the fuel load. To make sure it did it. Look, 16,180. So that kind of works out perfectly there. So now with that being said, I don't know why I closed the ISS screen. We are going to need that uh, right now to finish this portion of it. Um, so now you're going to hit the right over arrow and we're going to get the zero fuel weight, which is 156.8. You're going to take, put the decimal right between the six numbers and you're going to round this last digit up to eight because this number is greater than five. So we're going to do 156.8. And then, of course, this is pretty much standard 26.5 on the center of gravity. Slide this bad boy over just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Double, re verify it 156.8, 26.5. And then the block fuel, we're going to just call this, uh, we'll just do 6.2 to be on the safe side because it's, we're, if we're rounding up that number again, we're going to round that up to a 2. So it's. So we'll say 6.2 and there's that. So now we can get rid of this for a little bit and we need to come over here and start plugging in the airports here and then we'll get the ATIS guys. We'll load up the plane and then we'll get out of here. We have nobody flying with us this evening. Um, so it should be a pretty smooth flight, hopefully. We do look like we have uh, some centers on in uh, New York Center airspace. And this one's pretty much a no-brainer. This is the most applicable runway to depart on. So now we just need to figure out, are we going to depart out to the southwest or are we going to depart out uh, to the uh, basically northeast, if you will. So we'll figure that out here shortly. We do know that our departure... Um, is going to be on the Hurricane 4, so let's pull that up as well. There's the Hurricane 4. And that's pretty much what we need from there, and then we can also get Boston's situation pulled up. So, here we go. We got the airport information here, and we're going to be arriving in Boston on the Roebuck 3, which is a pretty... Uh, popular arrival you know a lot of people arriving on the Roebuck uh, from what I see and then you know the Roebuck is going to depend on which runways <clears throat> that we're taking so we we'll even hold off on that let's get the ATIS there and uh, figure out what's a crack a lacking 
so we'll go ahead and pull up our ATIS now and I even see New York Center's on Boston Center went off so this is made potentially a flight with uh, not a whole lot of ATC but that's the name of the game and that's why I fly on uh, pilot in sometimes when there's no ATC because that's guaranteed ATC so Raleigh Durham uh, the winds are calm and uh, the altimeter is 3018 so we can go ahead and plug that in right now You know, a lot of times I shy away from flying at night so you guys have something to look at. But, you know, I did promise myself that I would be doing more flights, you know, real time. So <clears throat> IRS has got about two more minutes to align. So that's that's awesome. So with the winds being calm and us going to the north, it only makes sense that we choose the runway that points us in the right direction. So we're going to uh, take runway five <clears throat> because we are flying out north. So let's choose runway five. Transition for us is going to be Febble. So let us definitely start getting the flight plan together. So for our departure, we are going to choose, uh, of course, runway five left. And here's the distance of it. So, you know, that's the runway we want. And we're doing hurricane with the Febble transition. And bada bing, bada boom. We insert that bad boy and you can see there is no vector. So we'll be able to follow our flight director all the way out. After Febble, we're going direct to Tango Yankee India if you are. So we'll plug that bad boy right in. And after the Tangi Tango Yankee India, we go into an airway. So let's insert this. And then come here. And now let's go ahead and put in. Oops, that's the wrong side. Let's see. Let's go here. We gotta actually click on this bad boy. And then go into the airways and then we're gonna go enter the airway from tango yankee inner india to juliet 79. and then from juliet 79 we're exiting at the jfk uh vor so that's where we'll exit that airway told me that everything was aligned by that message popping in so we'll insert that because the next thing to do we now we need to get into let's see Boston is north right now so the winds are from 310 degrees at 11 knots so not too bad so we'll come take a look at Boston and what I know about Boston um, I know that runway 27 is utilized <clears throat> For landing for sure we've got runway 33 left let's see and it's 310 so 32 is gonna be out so it's either gonna be 27 or 33 and and I know two twos are often used so for landing I believe we'll use uh, three three left. That's the closest to our the winds there. <clears throat> Even though it'll make for a longer taxi, because we're landing at. Let's check and see where we're landing at here. Then we'll see what approaches are used. Uh, let's look for the parking gates. And again, we're going to be parking at Alpha Six. Okay, so I believe these, <clears throat> excuse me, are the alpha gates over here. So if we're looking for alpha six, it could be somewhere back over here. Because there's the Bravo concourse, the Charlie concourse, uh, and obviously this is Echo. So giving my vast knowledge, I'm going to say that this is basically the satellite terminal. So alpha six um, essentially is going to be right over here. So 
you know, we want to take that into consideration as we land. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I believe that we can uh, make an approach 7,000 feet. It's pretty short. <clears throat> pretty be a pretty abrupt landing there. Um, you know, we'll have to go for the longer taxi. I'm going to choose 3 3 left, guys, just to be on the safe side. Um, I know for sure I've landed on this 2-7 before, but just to be on the safe side, let's do this 3-3 left, because I know I have at least a part of there, which means it's an active runway. So, with that being said, let's come back over here and look at what approaches we have. <clears throat> Excuse me, see there's that 2-7 that we were talking about, which has a nice little approach. And let's see what 3-3 left has. And see, there's 3-3 left right here, so let's choose 3-3 left. And that will definitely give us an idea of uh, what we're doing. So now we need to come back here and uh, choose the appropriate arrival based off of the runway. And see, we're saying 3-3 uh, three, three left here. So this Roebuck RNAV-3 um, is definitely what we want to pick. <clears throat> so there's the JFK VOR. And of course... Uh, 3 3 left is going to come this way, so now we need to figure out where this goes. So let's look for the narration here if we get any. Okay, here it is up here. So landing 3 3 left. The last thing we need to really verify is bog, then on track 060. So as we look at it, here's bog. So this will be our last, uh, so to speak. Uh, fix on the standard terminal arrival and we need to be at 210 at 6000 so now here's potentially some choices in initial approach fixes here so we'll leave that there and now we can come down here man and figure out how we're going to get there so we said uh, 3 3 left is the poison that we're picking and we're coming in on the roebuck 3 uh, okay there's the the transitions that I was just talking about so Benin, <clears throat> Benin would be the one. So we can do B bog, then transit, you know, from here, make the left turn. And then these should be also in the orientation. So we'll go via Benin and we got a transition of JFK and now we can insert that. And it should be a flawless flight plan. And even where, <clears throat> you know, we can literally delete this and go straight to Benin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which I could do um, automatically. But, and let's see what's after Benin. Kohas and Emoy. So, it definitely doesn't have... <clears throat> Excuse me. It definitely doesn't have the rest of the situation on there so now we need to come here so we as soon as we hit Benin that's where we make our left turn boom you know as soon as we hit Benin that's where we make our left turn right there and come on in so um, let's uh, leave it in its discontinuity if that's even a word position there and accept that as that and we'll figure that out as we get closer <coughs> Now, of course, we need to go to our performance here and let's bring the rusty dusty uh, screen back in. And then, guys, after that, I'm definitely going to check the chat out, see what's cracking there. So now we know that we're planning a flex takeoff. Runway's nice and long for us, so we can, with the packs on, flex temperatures uh, 46. There's our V1, VR, and V2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we got uh, our V1 and V rotate at 143. And then our climb out is at 146. And we're doing flaps up. I mean, uh, flaps two. And it'll be up 05 for the trim setting.
and we're doing a flex temp of 46. Look, it's, I just saw that. It went between 46 and 48. Look, it's 48. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the first time I've ever seen. Let me just monitor that for a second. <clears throat> oh, thank you, baby. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> Goodness. All right, so we'll leave it at 46. And call it good. And there we go. So now let's come over here, put the flight plan in here, and then you guys know what I like to do. Let me check you guys out in the chat if everybody doesn't mind that. And uh, Captain Maul says, it's been a while. What's up with you, Captain Maul? My baby says, welcome everyone in chat. Thank you for joining my hubby. Please subscribe, like, and share to the channel. Uh, so share so this channel can grow. Thank you so much, babe. Appreciate you. My baby's over there putting in the good work. <clears throat> <clears throat> guys, sorry about <laughs> my Oh, can't help it. I don't know what's going on, man. Okay, so on a flight like this, you know, we're investing a lot of time. Let's go ahead and invest our uh, time in double checking the flight plan, as you see here. So let's just make sure it looks good. Out to the north, to northeast. Okay, and there it is. B bog, and then there should be the turn right there. Um, and that's going to happen pretty quick. So, you know, I think what I want to do is just <clears throat> go ahead and clear that. Clear that. Insert that. Now let's look at our turn. Boom takes a minute for her to swing around and get situated but we'll just slow down and be bog we'll be it we'll try to be at 180 let this turn happen as slow it is you don't want to rush that so we can get fully established and then bada bing bada boom we're in there guys so we most certainly have a awesome flight plan there so let's get it back onto our departure situation there and there you go guys now we can get ready to launch up out of here guys so the more time and then we got plenty of time to look at the ILS chart and all that stuff for us getting into uh, Boston to figure that out. Um, we'll get all this started. Maybe we will need to uh, let's get the door locked. We don't want those unruly passengers, man, getting us. Then we'll get all the weather information on. Uh, we can turn that off. And let me see generally how light this cockpit is. That's not too bad. I like the night ambiance, so I'm not tripping at all in the least. Let's see here. And of course, if we want to come up here, we can turn the overhead down just a little bit. And then we can also figure out this lighting situation. So plane is all oriented guys let's go ahead and shut this music off just to replace it with some boarding music as we continue to prepare for the flight okay he's going to the southwest gates all right boom 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 yeah because while they're loading we still have to uh, flying time is about an hour and 26 minutes, so it's not a bad flight at all. We'll actually see if we do something else. I'm really just planning for this one leg today, but uh, maybe that'll change, you know? See how I feel. If it's a good landing, we do another one. If it's a horrible landing, I'm done. I'm just kidding. Like I said, you know, Airbus landings I need work on. I mean... There would be a string of me getting it right, then it would be a string of me getting it wrong. And it all has to do with that last flare. You know, it's that last flare. They're never landings that are that break the landing gear. They're always landings that just make a rough landing sometimes. So let's, uh, you know, let's get some motivational boarding music here. All right, guys, let's go back and check the cabin out. Cabin is uh, good to go here. 
you look right into the cabin, it'll be light. We'll get those lights off for the flight. In the meantime, let's go back and take a look at our departure here. We are going to be departing on five left, so the taxi is really sweet. So we're going to make the nose basically face the southwest here. Um, so we'll go nose to the right. And it'll be a really simple taxi, um, you know, basically just Bravo, Bravo 1, essentially. Um, leaving this, and then we're out of here, guys, on this nice, long, 10,000-foot runway. So, let's get our Rusty Dusty better pushback situated. Okay, and, uh, you know, this is kind of the ramp. There's no ATC. I don't see a whole lot of air traffic. Normally, we would calling pushing back on this situation, but we're not going to. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Okay, roger that. And guys, today I won't be showing any controls. I had to switch my one of my cameras with the upgrade to X-Plane 11, which was inevitable to me because a bunch of stuff was breaking on my 10. I think Microsoft literally forced me to upgrade. So one of my cameras doesn't work, so we're not going to have a, a, a controls camera, but you'll just have my smiling face for you guys. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and get the APU going here. Okay, go ahead and get that started there. Packs will be to normal. Here in a second, once the APU's up, we will most certainly get the uh, fuel pumps on. Hydraulic pumps are already on. There is nothing up top to give us any concern. And while the APU's coming up, guys, let's set up our profile here we don't have any ATC so I'm just gonna set this right on up to 350 which is our cruising altitude flight directors are on the altimeters are checked at 3018 guys uh, and uh, we have it on the arc on both sides uh, there really is no terrain of concern here but I like to put a little bit of the terrain uh, forecasting on the first officer side and we're just waiting for this APU to become available and we will get our APU bleed on and prepare the doors for pushback. Okay, now it's available, so we can go with the APU bleed on, external power off. And back to the wonderful TOLIS ISS screen here. And we're going to go to the ground service. We can now uh, say goodbye to the external power as well as the chocks. And there we go. That part is done. And uh, let's tell our wonderful flight crew in the back to please expedite the boarding. And guys, just so you know, the real flight literally just left the gate. The real flight. So the real flight is Delta Airlines 1391. And they fly an Airbus A220-100 twin jet. It just the same gates and everything. So we're almost even right on the schedule of the real aircraft so if you guys look that up on flight aware it's delta airlines flight 1391 service from raleigh durham to boston parking and departing at gate delta uh, i believe one we didn't have that option on the x-plane load up and arriving at uh gate alpha six so we are literally mimicking uh this very same flight let's go ahead and finally get this doors um, so we have to simulate the ground crew here. We're going to go to the doors and we are going to close the doors. Okay, close, close, close. And let's get the cargo doors closed. Okay, I just saw that the main cabin door is closed. Please double check that close, all close, your close, items are put away. I so do this partly and because of the replays. Their their if you're in an all right. Row, Let's go ahead and get our better pushback. Crack a lock in. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. You are free to use your portable electronic devices during the boarding process. We have some okay, you can verify that the doors are all closed on the outside and the toe is probably going to come from inside the building. They got that magic toe, you know what I'm saying? They got that magic toe, baby. Mm -hmm. All right, Captain Maul says it's not easy to land, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. It's, you know, but that's what we live for, the challenge, right? So no worries there. 
and the, there it goes the tow all right now that the tow is driving up let's go ahead and get our beacon on and there we go you can hear that you can see the gate now pushing back okay all doors and hatches are closed ready to connect And as we push back before we take off, I may even dim the cockpit down even just a little bit dimmer. Let's see what we've got here, mate. Okay, that's dim. We'll get those lights on dim. And let's come down here, lower ecam, upper ecam. I don't think there's any light manipulation towards the bottom. So there we go. We can also come here and so connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Speaker off console floor bright dim. Alright, so before we release the parking brake, we need to go ahead and get that situation going. And we'll get the weather and all that situation going here. Here's the main, I want to say the main lighting here. Okay, that'll have to be good. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and release that parking brake. We are ready to go when you are. That's what we wanted to hear. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 318 with service to Boston. Our and you may start will be roughly one hour and... All right, guys, so welcome aboard. You guys can see the red beacon on, and we are heading to Boston Logan, guys, here on this Sunday evening. Let me get my position correct here. It was a little weird not giving you guys cameras, but it is what it is. Cabin crew, prepare cabin for departure. All right. Please direct your complete attention to the flight attendants as they demonstrate the safety features of our aircraft. You will notice a light illuminated above your seat. When this light is illuminated, please fasten your seatbelt low and tight across your lap. So again, so we call out our right uh, taxi instructions. We are basically going to just taxi Tango there are several emergency exits Bravo Bravo aircraft. 1 basically Please take a few moments now to locate your nearest exit In some cases your nearest exit may be behind you If we need to evacuate the aircraft floor level lighting will guide you towards the exit In the event of a decompression an oxygen mask will drop in front of you To start the flow of oxygen pull the mask towards you Place it firmly over your nose and mouth secure the elastic band behind your head tighten the straps if necessary and breathe normally Although the bag does not inflate, oxygen is flowing to the mask. If you are traveling with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your mask on first and then assist others. Keep your mask on until a member of the crew advises you it is safe to remove it. In the unlikely event of a water landing, a life vest is located in a pouch under your seat. Operation complete. Set parking brake. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Flip it over parking brake is Wrap set. Disconnect me to stand to by. Hold the straps tight. To inflate the vest, pull firmly on the red cord only when exiting the aircraft. If it doesn't inflate okay, automatically, start the right you can go into the mouthpiece for a manual inflation. This vest is equipped with a whistle and a light, so if you need to, your seat trick Okay, you can see the N2 fan is in motion there. Please make sure to exit the aircraft as soon as possible and leave your belongings. Please securely stow your personal items. Make sure your seatbelts are fastened and seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. We remind you that this is a non And we're verifying the APU so bleed is on. Disabling or destroying the smoke detectors located in the lavatories is prohibited by law. All of this information and more can be found in the safety card located in the seat back in front of you. We suggest reading this and letting the know if you have any questions. Ignition has not yet kicked on yet. I'm just waiting for that. The AP so bleed air is helping that, and then we'll get some ignition there. On the left. There's we'll the ignition igniting that fuel. Place. Pressure and the heat have built up enough into that engine system. And now you can see the exhaust gas temperatures rising up. We've got some movement on the notch one fan or the N1 fan.
once that engine becomes available you'll see that it'll click over the generator position from just APU there you go you just heard it right there and uh, okay we got low pressure in the other tanks there which is giving us an indication we need to turn our fuel pumps on there we go should extinguish that okay landing distance procedure apply okay so we got a good start on our uh, right engine as you can see okay calling out starting left engine and hand signal I don't know that they would have said it would have been on the right he probably disappeared already let's check the other side here okay he's no longer out there Looks like we got another Delta 2633 All right, let's go ahead and get our brakes to max. Anti-skid and nose steering wheel is going to be on. The, the brakes to max represents uh, our RTO, or rejected takeoff. There is the speed brake is up. And then finally, we'll, once we get the last engine fully started, uh, which it is in the process now, here goes the exhaust gap, gas temperatures rising. N2 is on the uptick, and now N1 is introduced as rotation. there we are but we're doing good for now guys we'll let that come up alberto d is in the house what's up with you big alberto d man felicidades saludos i hope all is well with you brother down there in socal holding it down okay guys now that's a good sign uh the first and second engines are up and available so now we're going to put our ignition into the normal standard situation let's also get our weather radar situated here so we're gonna put all this in the auto we're gonna use system one and we're gonna do weather and turbulence our EARA is on guys and uh, we've got one two two decimal eight uh, for the call out guys so let's go ahead and extinguish that APU now bleeds are coming off and APU can come off of course let's verify everything up top it's not gonna give us a problem which it's not Rally Durham traffic, uh, Delta 318 is pushed back from gate Delta 3 facing to Ready the to southwest. Go. We'll be taxiing to gate 5 for departure on the Hurricane 3 via Tango, okay. Bravo, Bravo 1 for uh, Rally Durham traffic. All right, guys, you know the deal. So we got to do a few things here first. Let's do our flight controls check. Pull up, pull down, alien on left. Alien on right, neutral, rudder to the right, rudder to the left, neutral, and tow brake. You can see the tow brakes on the rudder are working, so that's a good thing. We'll also check tow brake as we obviously taxi. And we also want to get this into the takeoff configuration. Uh, so now this is where we'll drop our flaps. Selecting flaps 2, we'll wait for it to indicate uh, the cabin. Let's go ahead and check the cabin here. And finally, the signs. Let's get them, you know, they're on. So we'll just get them to the auto and to the on. And let's check the takeoff configuration. Takeoff configuration is okay. And of course, we need to also check. Remember, it's flaps zero. It's supposed to be flaps uh, 0 0.5. So we better get it in the halfway position. Or the uh, trims, rather. See, 0 0.05 up. So here's the up, and we want to make sure that bad boy is basically 0 0.5, so it is. So we are ready to go. Runway turnouts on, and lights to taxi, and parking brake is released. Let me check you guys out one more time. Everything's looking good. He says, all is Gucci, big dog. Saludos, hey, thanks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, guys, so let's make this happen, and uh, here we go. Welcome aboard, guys. Wishing for a safe flight. All right, guys. That's what the passengers are kind of looking at there. Praying that the captain actually knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, and the, and, and the first uh, officer, which is you guys.
man these neo engines are so efficient man as soon as you basically get this thing going she just wants to roll right away The fellow pilot. I wonder where he's going. So we're looking for Bravo One. It's Bravo Two. And we're coming up on Bravo One here. Raleigh Durham traffic, uh, Delta 318, now we'll be entering runway 5 left for our departure out to the northeast on the Hurricane 3, uh, climbing unrestricted up to flight level 350 for Raleigh Durham traffic. Strobes are coming on. Landing lights are coming on. See that strobe doing its best work now. Clock is started. Take off. Inevitable. All right, nice little lineup, folks. Flexman SRS 46, takeoff power is set. Airspeed is alive. Eighty knots. One forty three is our rotation speed. V one and rotate. Positive rate. Gears coming up. Still hand flying her here. Rally Durham traffic. Uh, Delta 318 is vacated. Runway 5 left. Climbing out on Hurricane 3. Unrestricted flight level. 350 last call, rally Durham traffic. To the climb profile here. Nice and quiet here. Let the speed start picking up here before we start reducing our flaps. one still hand flying her here a little bit of turbulence there speed check flaps two flaps clean Still hand flying her. Uh, 
autopilot is engaged, autopilot is in control of aircraft. Okay, after takeoff checklist, let's go ahead and extinguish the uh, auto speed brakes. Uh, aircraft is in the climb profile. Flaps are selected up and zero, indicating the same as well. Landing gear is up and stowed. And now we can turn off the taxi light and we'll turn off the runway turn off lights and leave landing lights on until we get to 10,000 feet and then the landing lights will come off as well. Aircraft has confirmed that we are in the uh, FMS climb control as well as speed and we are confirmed on the flight path. No aircraft or traffic is in front of us. Terrain is not an issue. And we are at 6,500 and climbing out smartly. Let's go ahead and check our departure here. And there we go, guys. We are on our departure. Let's get a little look out here of the Archer here. Hey guys, welcome aboard. Uh, Chris Scott says hello everyone. Nice. Uh, Captain Mouse's graphic are just insane and beautiful. Thank you, Captain Mouse. Appreciate it. Um, Spawn and Salmon is in the house. He says, what's good, fam? Man, what is good for all of you guys? Uh, appreciate you riding on board, guys. And we are up in Adam. Um, it's kind of a moot point to do a flyby, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. It's nighttime. <laughs> So there we go. Bunch of shiny lights at night. <laughs> all right. So we got the shiny lights at night. That's all good. And uh, we're almost at the 10,000 mark here. 9,500. And now what we're going to do, guys, we're still going to use the autopilot, but we're going to go unrestricted. So we're going to pull it out. That little... Uh, filled in circles going to disappear and now we are going to climb unrestricted planes best performance at the given speeds as you can see we're climbing out 2300 feet per minute we have crossed the 10,000 mark landing Gentlemen, lights are off now feet. Turn on and portable smoking is in the auto this and the seat belts uh, I'm going to leave them on just in case we get any turbulent air this aircraft is equipped with onboard Wi-Fi. If you wish to connect to the Wi-Fi, you will be required to pay a small fee. We do offer complimentary in-flight TV things to our partners. Man, this thing is so clicky. What I noticed with the update is very clicky and what the click spots are. There we go. So there you can see there's our feeble last uh, fix on our standard instrument departure. Then there's our first VOR, which we turn. Tango Yankee India so we'll turn from almost direct east and we'll start hoarding heading northeast on about a heading of uh, 61 or 62 there as we travel up the eastern seaboard uh, from Raleigh Durham to uh, Boston Logan so you see she's Pitch down just a little bit so she can pick up the next FMC speed, which is right at about 310 knots here. And then you'll see her start pitching up. Uh, everything in the cabin is looking good. Engines are all green and copacetic. And uh, we are six minutes, well, seven minutes now into it. Um, and the Zulu time, as you can see here, is bada bing, bada boom, right there. Wonder why that guy's coming in so low. I think he's got a low microphone. Uh, green light says, "Big up, out eating with the fam." Oh, isn't it? You flying at night, my man. That's right. Uh, Chris Scott says, "Love Delta's new A32, 321 Neo." Yes, absolutely, Chris. Man, that Neo is the bomb. Dot com for sure. And uh, remember, guys, I told you that one of my homeboys had been asking me, "Did I fly at night?" It was actually green light. So. <laughs> doing this night flight in my man's uh, honor there <laughs> why he's out getting those fiddles with the fam so guys welcome aboard let's take a look at the cabin here and uh, 
Let's see if we can work on that cabin lighting there. Let's see, interior light. Let's actually come up and look at this. Uh, dome, interior lighting. Let's see, that's where the... There we go. We can turn that dome lighting off. see if there's a way okay here's the cabin pressure elevation I want to see if there's a way I can turn those cabin lights off in the back damn okay let's see what we got in here in the cockpit it's nice and dark in here now guys that's what we wanted and let's see if it made a difference in the back as well by turning I don't think it did the lights are still on so we'll see when those lights go off I don't know if there's a way for me to turn those lights off green light says hit the commercial button it should dim the lights. Okay, he says hit the commercial button. It should dim the lights. Mm, where's the commercial button at, Green? Since I haven't flown this at night, I never have to worry about this. Maybe let's look down here. Let's see. Mac call. Boom, boom, boom. Where's the commercial light at, Green? Hit the commercial light. If you're watching, Green, let me know where that light's at so I can get it down. I'm assuming it's going to be up top here. Compass. Overhead. Seat belts. This is the enunciator light. The dome light. <clears throat> I don't see the commercial light. Maybe a look on battery panel. Okay, cool. Here's the battery. Okay, I see. go back and check it out nope nothing so that didn't dim it uh, galley that's the electric we don't want to turn the electric off so that'll be all right I think on this aircraft it's gonna dim it down on its own based off of the flight so I think even on approach the lights are off so uh, that's the commercial light. That's off. Here's the galley. That's for the your food and stuff. You don't want to mess with that. So, and this didn't dim it down. So, oh well. Maybe there's nothing that can be done with that. It's all good though, guys. Let's get some jams going on here. Alright guys, we are on our way to Boston Logan. Once again folks, welcome aboard Delta Airlines Flight 318. Full flying time is an hour and 26, so nothing too egregious as we make our way up the northern uh, sea, I mean the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States. And when we started the flight, we had all types of ATC on. Now we have no type of ATC on. <laughs> so we'll see between now and then if we are able to uh, get some ATC. And the guy who just left Raleigh Durham, he's headed to uh, Atlanta, so he's not coming this way. Got a few other jets headed to Boston, so just looking at uh, our route, calculating that we will have a few folks arriving in the Boston Logan area kind of at the same time, so we'll definitely keep our eyes peeled for that. And uh, yeah, we are make, doing our best work heading up to Boston Logan again sorry about the flight controls guys I was forced to upgrade to Windows 11 you guys know I just built my new computer with the help of my brother uh, not that long ago and uh, you know uh, okay we've passed transition over here 
doing my best talk. Let's go ahead and put all this into the standard. But anyway, what happened is one of the cameras that I used um, is a Canon Rebel T7i, so it required the Canon uh, software, which you know it's it's a webcam software, which allows you to use your regular you know high, which isn't it is a super high end camera, but it's higher end than most cameras uh, for HD video anyway, and uh, that software is not compatible with Windows 11. Um, so I cannot use that camera, which is one of my other cameras that I use outside of my other two webcams. So, and the other webcam is such in such a position um, for you guys to get the, the top-down look that I don't move that camera if at all possible. So I'm probably I've got this little other camera here, which I didn't even connect it. I didn't want to go through the hassle. The problem is this one doesn't zoom, so this is probably one of my lowest in web cameras so maybe I'll mess with it another time to see if I can get those controls on and it's only going to be my air buses that are not going to have uh, the camera on the side stick the rest of the simulators that I do well DCS I don't run the cameras on the controls anyway it's kind of a moot point there's so much going on but ATS and anything any other type of aircraft that requires a push pull or a yoke system um, you will have the cameras on that so not to worry there at all so guys we have already passed transition in our climb now we can go ahead and range this bad boy out and uh, you can see our northeastern route all the way up to Boston Logan I'm just monitoring the climb here. If you look at those winds right now, we've got winds out of the west off that jet stream at 81 knots. Uh, and so you can see this yellow line here is indicative of where the plane is facing. You can see we're yawing to the left to compensate for the winds pushing us right so it doesn't blow us off this track here. So you're also going to notice our vertical speed fluctuating a little bit because the aircraft is doing its best to maintain stable flight. But you can see here... Uh, even in our indicated airspeed, it's fluctuating big time. And here goes the vertical speed, which fluctuates because of the, you know, the aircraft is trying to pitch to keep the indicated airspeed here. And once the indicated airspeed is messed up, that's obviously going to mess with the vertical speed profile. So we're going to monitor that. we got about 10,000 to go. That's something to keep in mind. And we're also looking at the top of the climb is being estimated to be in 70 nautical miles until we get to the top of the climb. But we've still got enough fuel estimated on board for arrival in uh, the Boston Logan area. So that's really what we want to take a look at and, and keep that in mind. So um, we'll keep making sure that we got what we need. Feel like that center pedestal is a little bit bright let's see what this landing does here okay that's for the switches i think we need to bring this guy down a little bit okay that's for that this is the lower pedal oh, that's for that i feel like the floodlights here are pretty bright so let's go back up tight up top and fix that. See, dome is off. Overhead is off. It's the emergency light. It's the enunciator check. And if we have dome lights on, that's off. Yeah, I just feel like those lights in the middle are pretty bright. It's not too bad. I don't really think there's too much we can do about those. Rock City is in the house. Big up to you, Rock City man. Happy Sunday, man. And hope you're doing well, Rock. Hope you're taking lots of flights and treating them rough. All right, guys. You can see we have no longer need to use this. So we'll go ahead and get rid of anything Rally Durham related because it is definitely in the rear view. Um... Let's take a look here as we prepare 
to think about our arrival because this really is not a long flight at all. We can see here that we're going to be transitioning onto the standard terminal arrival for the Roebuck 3 here at the JFK VOR, um, and in which turns our first actual constraint will be here at FEX. We need to be at flight level 230, and Ruiz, we need to be at flight level 230 or anything in between, not to exceed uh, a lower altitude of flight level 210 or 21,000 feet. So let's check facts or Reese in the old flight computer because I did notice the other day that some of the altitudes were off. 230, awesome. Maurice, 221 is within the constraints. The next one, Owlin and Banky, let's check those. Owlin above 17, Banky above 16. Okay, perfect. So above 17, above 16, that looks good. Now getting into Roebuck, it's at uh, 260, so I'm assuming they want us at 15,000. So anything between 19,000 and 12,000 at 260, that's good. Provi above 11, Jaina at 11 with the speed restriction of 250. Eleven thousand, Jaina two hundred and fifty at eleven thousand. I like it. Ansley two hundred and forty at eight, and then two hundred and twenty at seven. Two hundred and forty at eight, two hundred and twenty at seven. I like it. And finally, Bog two hundred and ten at six thousand. No questions asked. Two hundred and ten six thousand. I like it. And then from there, Benin is uh we're going to be much slower than that of course and uh we're looking for the altitude 4630 feet but let's see what it says on the approach chart benin needs to be at 4000 okay so that's what we want at benin is 4000 so benin needs to be at 4000 so let's come in here and it's, it's 4000 plus but we just want 4000 So now Benin's at 4,000. Don't worry about the speed. I'm going to be managing the speed. Kohas at 3. Kohas at 3. Nimoy at 15. And that's where we get the Maltese Cross. There's 15. And then you can already see it's already calculating for the approach speed there. So it's already calculating what our approach speed will be. And if the winds aren't egregious, I am going to do a full flaps landing. We have a real Airbus pilot that we, you know, basically can consult with that's in our world flight team. And as a real Airbus pilot, he states they only really land in the flap three configuration if the winds are egregiously high, gusting or something like that. Other than that, they're always landing it full flaps in the Airbus. So we are going to do the exact same thing because that's how we should be doing it. see that night sky is not being friendly at all on the view uh, Rock City says happy Sunday bro <laughs> he says he ain't doing a damn thing <laughs> that's what's up with you rock man sometimes that's the best thing to do is absolutely 100% nothing at all <laughs> so that is A-OK -okay in my book that is A-OK -okay in my book Yeah, guys, and, you know, unfortunately, let's get every little view we can, but there's just, there's just not going to be a whole lot we're looking at tonight. <laughs> Hence the reason I don't do a lot of night flying for you guys, so. There we go. Look at that. My baby loves me so much. She got some water and got me a little bar here. And she fed me this morning. I woke up to breakfast being made. So, again, baby, big up to you. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for feeding me 
and the kids. <laughs> so, appreciate you, babe. And guys, we are making our way to Boston Logan. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Uh, we're just about a uh, thousand to go until the top of our climb, which is going to be flight level 350, and then I'll most certainly give you guys an indication um, as to when top of descent is going to occur. But keep in mind, this was a very short flight. I believe I stated an hour and 21 minutes, so we're less than an hour for sure until we should be touching down in the Boston Logan area. So we've got about 500 and well, 500 feet to go now, guys, until we are at our top of climb. Because that's how we roll. Another thing we can do to kind of give you guys a visual is we can come right over here to the maps. Zoom out to about level eight or so. You can see we're just passed over Williamsburg, Virginia. nice if this had a night mode and see if it does map style doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. nope it does not so this one has just got to be bright there's no way to put this one in a night mode if you will And I and I honestly think this is the best view we have right here. <laughs> Night flight. Um, so, all right, guys. As promised, top of descent. Let me check something out here. I am flying real world time, so everything should match up. Uh, it says ETA is. Um, I can't even read it. Um, but if you look at the ETA, that should be the real world time. It looks like it's 0131, something of that nature. And it is. So the actual times in the aircraft are going to match the real world times pretty much if you're following Zulu time right now or Greenwich Mean Time. Um, so we take a look at our top of descent at uh, 0114. So how we match that up? We got 0045, so essentially we've got about right under 30 minutes to our top of descent. Okay, since I am flying real time, I didn't adjust the time, I flew real time. So, that's what we have right there, guys. Is about 29 minutes or so. Uh oh, contact me. So, we do have some ATC. So, 33 uh, DC center, 33725. going to give us a new squat code. Good evening, DC Center, Delta 318, flight level 350. Uh, DC Center, Delta 318, flight level 350. Good evening. Uh, 318, Washington Center, good evening. Squawk 0555. 0555, in the box, Delta 318. 0, triple 5. Uh, 747, the 718, flight level 370. 718, flight level 370, special contact Washington, please come and find my date with your 
Got radar contacted, so we are confirmed and on the scope, baby. That's how we do that. That is how we do that, man. Airspace is a little bitty, busy. Uh, sir, Vilio uh, says hi. Big up to you, my G. Uh, where are we flying to? So we're flying, we departed out of Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, so Kilo Romeo Delta Uniform, and we're flying to Boston, Logan International, obviously in Massachusetts, uh, Kilo Bravo Oscar Sierra, welcome aboard guys, Delta Flight 318, he says, oh dang, <laughs> Yeah, not bad, not a bad flight. Flying time, my friend, is only uh, from wheels up to wheels down. Flying time is an hour and 26 minutes. And we are already 30 minutes into that, so we're less than an hour to go, guys. Honestly. You know, we're doing good, and if we come down here and take a look at our top of descent, not bad at all. We've only got 192 nautical miles to go until our top of descent, so this... We'll be happening really quick. And I'm totally... Uh, it's Philadelphia scenery. Something going on with it. Uh, I'm still debating in my head. I may either do another leg in uh, X-Plane or I may stop the stream and do a little DCS uh, stream for you guys here in a little bit. I feel like flying some helicopters. I might get back on the Rotorhead server and see how much success we can have. We'll see. We'll see. As we get closer, maybe I'll even let you guys vote on what you're going to see. DCS or more x -Plane. We'll see. It's also going to depend on how I feel, what I want to do. For sure. But because I am a nice guy, uh, how's the traffic right now? Uh, the uh, DC Center airspace just actually came on, or center controller just came on, so the traffic's not too bad right now. If you guys check Bastastic or if you go on to Volanta, I gotta get better about logging into Volanta. Uh, I mean, there's sporadic traffic, nothing too, too egregious, of course. Yeah, we'll be in this airspace for a little longer. 104th money about to start it up. Haven't installed the CPU cooler yet, but I want to see if it works. Okay, good luck, money man. Good luck with you. <laughs> hey, fingers crossed. One of my homies is, uh, he's actually putting his computer together. He actually called me earlier. We got on with my older brother who helped me put my computer together. So, man. Hey, money. I'm giving you the... Hope it all works out, dog. 
Start it up and then get that thing turned off, man, and get that CPU cooler put in there so nothing overheats. <laughs> yep. And the crazy thing about putting a computer together, too, as well, is that you always have to ground yourself because the little bit of electricity that is from our environmental electricity that our bodies get, or static electricity from friction of us walking on the floor, even, can short that computer out. So you always want to make sure you ground yourself on something and then start touching your computer parts, man. It's crazy. And I, by no stretch of the imagination, in some computer constructor guru, I had my brother help me put it together. Now, programming the computer, getting all the software and getting it to recognize certain drives and stuff, that's all me. But as far as the, the put the hardware together and all that, I'm still, I'm still in the learning phase of that. I know Rock City, he puts his computers together. Money's, you know, doing a good job putting his own computer together. Who else puts their computers together? You know? That way I can know who you are in case I gotta ask you a question on my next bill. <laughs> you guys let me know, man. Money says, so just Googled it. Not recommended to start without the cooler, so guess it's gonna be a bit longer. Yeah, I would say, uh, and Rock City says, yes, sir, I do. That's what I was saying, Money. Don't turn that thing on without that cooler. That thing gets so hot. So, yeah, I don't I was say, I don't recommend that, homie. So, that's a good call right there. Thank you, Google. For showing my boy the right thing to do. <laughs> oh, there. Found you on Volanta. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And if you guys are finding me on Volanta, that's why I also fly with this so you guys can see exactly where I'm at. So you can see here, we're right just northeast of Salisbury. I believe that's Dover, Rhode Island, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Not New Jersey, but New Jersey. There's the Vine Vineland there, the Hamptons, I'm sure, all the New England states. Guys, we're going on to Roebuck 3. Speaking of which, speaking of which, uh, let's check the ATIS, guys. I was hoping Boston had there's Boston ground is on but Okay, Adis, uh winds are still out of the uh basically the west three hundred degrees at thirteen knots altimeter there is uh three zero zero four outside temperature is four degrees Celsius, so not too bad on the temperature four degrees Celsius with a dew point of minus zero three, so because the temperature is four degrees and it's the dew point's minus seven, that's actually seven degree difference. There shouldn't be any haze. Once those two are basically the same numbers, you can expect some haze and a little chop as you're coming in. So I like that. Uh, it's not crazy matter at all. And the winds, 30013, we're coming on runway 33, which is 330 degrees. So it's only a 30 degree offset. Um, so yeah, we're, we're okay. We're okay. And again, we'll be having top of descent here in probably the next, uh, 14, about 19 minutes. So, let's also be proactive, guys. And look at our minimums. Okay, so the minimums of the decision height is 216. That can tell you that our touchdown elevation is 16. So again, there's two ways to look at this. If you were to use the radar or radial altimeter, the radial altimeter, you just set it for 200. So no matter what, that beam that shot down 200 feet at your above ground level, not it, not your mean, your your sea level, but your above ground level, it's going to shoot that beam, and no matter what that 200 feet is, it's going to let you know you're 200 feet above the ground. When you're using barrel, you have to actually kind of think of it. What's 200 feet 
above the touchdown zone. In this case, it's 16 feet, so you add 200, so our barometric altitude is going to be 216. And that's how you figure that piece out. So let's go here and put 216 in. We're going to put it in the barrel. If it was in the radio, then it would be 200. But we're going to use barometric, so now there that is. I'll continue to fill this out, which technically we could right now based off of our meter, uh, just to get some pre-calculations. Um, we can use this guy over here for our calculations. So if we want to come into our landing performance, 3-3. Three, three, look, it's already got the meter in there, which is awesome. The altimeter is correct. The wind speed is correct. So it's got the meter in here, which is awesome. Outside air temperature, which we talked about, is 4. Runway condition is dry. There's no icing. We're landing flaps full. And the brake mode will be medium. Reverse is going to be on. We can compute that for 149. So touching down here, this is the landing distance required here. And this is the landing in feet that they're anticipating with our profile that's going to happen. And then look at the margin. We've got plenty of oops runway here. We've got 5,654 feet of oops. I still need more runway to get this thing slowed down. We're going to revisit this here in a second you know as we're starting our descent but this gives us an idea of what our V approach speed will be before I'm gonna do it again before I actually put it in the, the FMC guys but that's why this is awesome right here to have that on board then of course we can get right into where we're expecting to come onto the arrival which we've already verified this is the inset so we probably the plane itself won't show up until we're between Ruiz and Allen so there we go so I hope I'm able to also my whole goal every flight is to teach a little bit you know um, are you making any stops no stops on this flight this is a direct flight this is a direct flight um, and as stated I am mimicking a real-world flight that's happening right now I'll tell you where it's at the real world flight that I'm mimicking right now is Delta Airlines flight 1391 which it's arriving in 11 minutes it took off a little bit before I did but if you guys go to flight aware look for Delta flight 1391 so Delta 1391 you can see it departed gate Delta 1 it's arriving in Boston at gate Alpha 6 and it's on its descent right now and it is an hour and 22 minutes late so it departed the gate late it looks like it departed out of Raleigh Durham an hour and 22 minutes late but it's only going to be in an hour and 14 minutes late into Boston so I am literally mimicking a real flight right now Delta 1391 Raleigh Durham to Boston Massachusetts that is the flight that I'm mimicking right now for you guys so and and guys again I still haven't fully decided if I'm gonna do another flight here or if I'm gonna switch over to DCS I'm having the Jones to fly some helicopters so we'll see either way I'm gonna give you guys something else I just don't know whether it'll be another leg in here or somewhere else. We'll see. And we've got a little bit longer to be in this airspace, so. So once we start our descent, I'll check the ATIS once again. And again, the only ATC on in Boston is the ground. 1362 Washington Center, good evening. Which is surprising because Boston is always on. You guys know that. 
Sir Vileo says you have a new subscriber. Thank you so much. He says good luck. Thank you for your subscription. I hope you enjoy the channel. Um, we aim on this channel to share information, help each other out, right? There's a saying, iron sharpens iron, so we all here to, you guys help me, I help you, we enjoy the channel. You guys fly with me, I recommend it all, so thank you for your subscription. We also do uh, American Truck Simulator, simulate that as realistic as possible, as well as Digital Combat Simulator World, or DCS World. Uh, so, thanks for your subscription, and definitely welcome aboard. Next couple flights, we'll be doing some more giveaways. I did a couple, maybe about five, six, maybe even seven stream ago. I did some giveaways, so we will be doing giveaways on the channel, of course. So, I appreciate you guys riding with me, as always. Four Echo Echo, turn left, heading, uh, left, heading zero, four, three, intercept the runway one, center, local avenue. Okay, and you guys can see that we've got uh, top of descent just past the 80 miles there so we're probably looking more realistically at 90 miles just using our visuals here so let's verify that it should be between 80 and 90 miles and 87 miles so we're right on the money we're right on the money now as far as the navigation goes as we get a little closer we'll make sure the ILS Frequency shows up here along with the front course. That'll be more likely when we start our descent. Now to stay ahead of the aircraft. Pilot Porter's in the house. He says, what's up? What's good with you, Pilot Porter, man? Happy Sunday to you. Now one of the things that we're going to do as well, we're going to put in Boston Grounds. Okay, Boston does have ATIS and ground is on. Uh, National uh, Terminal 1, uh, IFR to Baltimore. But no tower, no center. So Boston Ground is on with the ATIS. So 1219. 4 Echo Echo Dallas Airport's off here 11 o'clock and 1 1 miles report the field site. So when we land and clear the runway, we'll get on Boston ground, and then the ATIS that's coming out of Boston is 135000. So we'll check that as we start our descent. And the bottom altitude uh, on our descent is 6,000. So as we get ready for our descent, we'll get that ready. We'll set it and then put it in. We're going to be live in this guy's airspace here shortly. Pilot Porter says it's Sunday, but it's my Friday. Oh, okay, got you. All right, well, happy Sunday slash Friday, which the Friday part is a little bit more important because now you get some days off, Pilot Porter, so I'm happy for you, Mitchie. And I believe that could have been for us. Maybe it wasn't. We're still in this airspace and we'll see if that was for us. I was doing a lot of the talking, man. So guys, here shortly we're about to start our descent into the uh, Raleigh-Durham area, or I'm sorry, to the uh, Boston area. So... We've already established that we need to park over here. We're supposed to be going Terminal A. So this is the Bravo Terminal. This is the, I believe, Charlie Terminal. Right, let's go take a look at this. Checked on in the year only. 
Okay, yeah, there's Bravo, there's Charlie. We're parking at gate Alpha 6, so I'm just going to assume it's here. This is the satellite terminal, well, there's no 6 here anyway, so Bravo 6 is here, so we're arriving on runway 33 left. We're going to take that, and it's going to be a long taxi. It's going to be a long taxi, but, you know, we'll just stay Alpha. Um, we can taxi Alpha all the way to Echo, to Kilo, and bring it in. So it's not going to be a fun taxi, but I chose that runway to be on the safe side. So we're going to exit stage left, guys. So we should be leaving his airspace prior to us needing to start our descent. we will be right there on the cusp. Let's get our MCP ready here. And uh, probably Max 598 from the outside of my airspace now. Boss is offline for extension to prove today. Delta 318, I will delay the switch to Unicom. Okay, Delta 318, that was for you. Yeah, I dropped you off here just a couple minutes ago for Exchange and Have a good day. Okay, you too, brother. Thanks a lot, Delta 318. Yeah, so I must have missed his call. So, boom, there we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the ground frequency down there. So, because that's the next ATC that uh, we'll be worried about. And we're on Unicom, so there you go. Alright guys, as soon as we get in this next band, and I like to step it down so I get a more accurate uh, call here. So 2030, once we get into this band here, we'll turn the music off, which is going to happen shortly, and we'll prepare for our arrival into Boston Logan, guys. Hopefully the old wrist, because I am flying with my Thrustmaster uh, Airbus side stick and Thrustmaster throttle deck. I don't have the expansion with the flaps and all that, but I got the throttle and the Thrustmaster, so, uh, and the side stick, so, get the old left wrist going here, as we make our way in. And just like that, it's pretty quiet. Let's see if there's any chance of us uh, picking up that ATIS. Okay, ATIS is 
Okay, so saying the runway's wet. So information Victor's current. Suggested ones. So three three left is active. That's the one we're still landing on. As you can observe here, our top of descent is once it gets to two, that's a wrap. Okay. All right, there we go. So Victor is current. Boston Logan and area traffic. Uh, Delta 318 is the A3201 NEO. It's just vacated flight level 350. Now descending on the Roebuck 3. Expecting uh, full stop ILS runway 33 left for area and Boston Logan traffic. Okay, guys. There we go. Uh, there, It's wet. So let's get some anti icing on there. Just to be on the safe side and uh, once we get closer to transition we'll put our constraints on in the landing system and you can see that uh, even the speed is still fluctuating look at those winds coming out of the uh, west there west northwest at 132 knots so she is you know struggling to not over speed and I see you know if it gets any closer we'll have to deploy some some air brakes there Speaking of which, we have decided to land on medium. And we'll also come down here and arm this as well in our descent into the Boston Logan area. Pretty soon we're going to start being representative on this here trusty dusty chart. But I am cautiously making sure that we don't overspeed, which, ooh, very close. There you go. Very close on that. So target altitude is set to 6,000 for a reason. And that reason being that the last fix is at 6,000 at 210. And then as we transition from BBOG, we're going to Benin, which will start lining us up for runway 33 left. Okay, another thing we need to check now is the ILS frequency. Okay, the ILS DME is heading of 330-110-7, India, Lima, India, Papa. Nav radio, ILS 1107. The front course is off by 2 degrees, but that's fine, and it's India, Lima, India, Papa. So this tells you that the Airbus has the right frequency and front course already programmed in for our ILS. Now we're going to do one more check of the Airbus's uh, computer system by way of our V-Pilot plugin. Okay, traffic, 
right. Okay, so now the winds are 300, 13, gusting 18. Still not the worst that it could be. Altimeter is 3004, so that's what we're going to put in there. So we'll just put 13 in there. So let's also recalculate here, and the runway is wet. So let's go back to landing performance. Uh, runway condition is wet. So we're just going to put wet. 3004, 3003 left, medium, everything else is the same. So now you can see the required, the normal landing distance of this Airbus is 4,213 feet. The required, based off of weight and weather conditions now, brings us to a total landing uh, requirement of 5,079 feet with a margin of error of 4,992. So almost the same, you know, about half since it is a 10,000 foot runway. So, and then again, there's the meta right there. Uh, there's the time that we got the meta in. Uh, so there you go. And here is the 13 gusts and 18, 10 static miles. V approach is still the same as 149. And you know what? Remember I talked about the flaps full with winds gusting, so we are no longer landing flaps full. So let's reconfigure. And we need a little bit more runway now so we're going to configure for flaps three brake mode medium there you go and we've got the wet conditions selected as well as our landing configuration of three because of those gusting winds you're not wanting to land flaps full with this because you want to actually now reduce the amount of lift that the aircraft is going to have flying at that slower speed because those winds are gusting those winds are actually going to supplement your forward indicated airspeed with lift over the wings so you want to reduce the level of flaps so that doesn't happen 3004 is the altimeter let's check on our descent here we're doing our right turn so no big deal and we are no longer in jeopardy because of our altitude of over speeding uh, so let's get this in the flight computer here Remember, the outside temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. 3. And you can see the disparity. 148, 149. And again, we're going to choose that. And look, now it's telling us configuration 3 that we'll need a V approach of 150. So that's what we'll set. We've got ILS 33 left in there for our final, which we already confirmed with this, so we're good there, as well as our barometric uh, decision height of 216 feet uh, with a 16 foot touchdown elevation for our landing. And there we go. And of course, we have our uh, auto spoilers armed or our speed brake is armed. And if you look up front, uh, and it says ice not detected. We'll keep it on just a little bit longer. We've got our auto brakes intensity set to medium. Uh, transition will pull this out and set 3004 at the altimeter. And go from there. So right now we're at about flight level 230. Let's check our approach. Now we're starting to show up and it's again calculating Ruiz at flight level 230. Then we'll start our descent to be above 17,000 at all and above 16 at Banky between 19,000 and 12,000 at indicated 260. Um, above 11,000 at Provi as we transition uh, to Judy and then on to Jaina. That's 250 uh, at 11,000 feet. Not a Foot above or below, hopefully. Then we'll go to Ansley at 8,000, Barry between 6 and 7, and B Bog at 210 and 6, and then Benin is at 4. After we get to B Bog at 210, I'm immediately going to slow the aircraft or start slowing the aircraft down to the additional approach fixed speed of 180. 
start configuring the aircraft for landing. Uh, by the time we get to here, we will most likely be in flaps one profile. And flaps one speed is at uh, flaps one plus, you know, with our uh, everything extended at the one, it's 225, so we'll be below that speed at the 210, so we'll be safe to uh, increase our flaps to flaps one at that point. Boston Logan traffic, uh, Delta 318 is at flight level 230, descending via the Roebuck 3, uh, and will be transitioning onto the ILS 33 left. We'll call left to final, expecting full stop for Boston Logan traffic. And there we go, guys. That is how we are rolling. You can see our descent is continuing. Aviation Geek is in the house, man. What up with you, my G? Big up to you. Hope you're doing well today, fam. Hope you're getting some more of those, uh, that plane spotting taken care of. Don't mind us. We are just, uh, flying the aircraft from Raleigh, Durham to Boston, Logan. More than likely after we land and do whatever replays we can do in the dark, uh, I will take a little break and we might switch over to digital combat simulator and we'll get some some helicopter stuff going here because it has an unruly passenger in the back had to toss him out <laughs> hey you got that right with no parachute <laughs> that's when you really believe you can fly then because you got no other better choice but to do that Definitely appreciate you guys riding along here on this uh, wonderful evening flight into the Boston area. Got to hydrate, man, so I can be in the zone. Got to be in the zone for you guys. And again, if you guys did hear earlier, sorry about no flight control cams for this Airbus. It's a side stick, and normally I only get the camera on there. It's the third camera, which I had to switch from a different camera, so this camera didn't get set up. So we're not going to have any flight controls in the way in, but you can best believe I'm going to be working the side stick. If you were flying the TBM, I would have uh, let the prop uh, taken him out. <laughs> and slice him up like an onion. <laughs> This is all just jokes, folks. Me and Aviation Geek, we're very nonviolent and we promote peace all the time. <laughs> all right. So ice is not detected. I don't see any clouds or any weather. So let's uh, get our anti icing off. Uh oh. 1347. The game just changed, folks. <laughs> Oh, this is getting interesting already. Hopefully we get 3-3 left. If not, we'll figure this thing out, guys. Here we go. I knew something was going to happen. Good evening, Boston Center. Delta 318 is 17,900 descending via the Roebuck 3. We do have uh, information. Victor at the field. Delta 13 Boston approach, thank you for that. Altimeter, or Boston Altimeter 3046 ILS 27. Uh, expecting ILS uh, 27. Is there any way we could get uh, ILS 33 left? That's what we were actually planned for. Um, yeah, we can do that. Okay, thank you, sir. We'll expect ILS 33 left. Appreciate your kindness. <laughs> All right. So. At least we got that. Doesn't hurt to ask. He could have said no. We would have just got, you know, 2-7 left in there. But, okay, that goes in increments. So, we'll leave it at 3003. And here we go. Right now, right now. Wait, wait, you pull the 
Aviation Geek says it worked out, dog. Gets a bonus sometimes on Vassim. You got that right, Aviation Geek, because he totally could have said no. So he's going to give us 3 3 left. I'll take it. I honestly do not feel like reconfiguring here, even though I can. It's a pain in the butt, though. Because you got to make sure you're flying the present heading. You got to make sure the star and everything is still in there. You got to remember your last waypoint. Uh, just in case, however, the system takes it. You know, sometimes it doesn't, it's not so friendly. Now we've got to remember, since we have ATC on, we can't just do what we want to do. We have to continue to fly a heading of 060, leaving BBOG, but hopefully he's going to give us the turn to Ben, because that's what I'm going to say at Ben. You guys, a little bit of that. Aviation Geek says, should have been a chicken gets a leg sometime since we are flying a leg. <laughs> okay, that's a good one, Aviation Geek. All right. Got to pay attention here. So we got Boston. No Boston Tower from what I can see. Just Boston ground, and then now, of course, Canada, Boston Center. All right, so we got to pay attention to what's being said now. Fires is in the house, man. What's up with you, Fires, man? Good to see you. Either Fire Z or Fires, you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about, man. Steady as she goes. Yes, yeah, been a while. That's that's right. Seven eight eight three thousand. Seven eight eight three thousand. American two eighty one. Again, we gotta work on our flare. So that's what I'm anticipating is a nice flare. Um, runway conditions are wet. We've got a uh, final approach speed of one five zero. Let's make sure that's still calculated. It is. Got our minimums. We got everything set up, guys. are getting to the 10,000 feet. All landing lights are on. The anti-ice is off. No anti-ice is detected. And we're at an hour and 12 minutes of an hour and 26 minute flight. So as far as flying time, we're looking good. See, he's got everybody 27. We're going to be the oddball out. <laughs> Boston, 
Please complete all Wi-Fi related tasks and show any larger electronics. Set us up for ILS 27 or ILS 3 left for America 21. ILS 27. Roger, ILS 27 for America 21. I'm just curious, looking at ILS 27 here. American 21, turn heading 240, join the runway 27 localizer. We were difficult. We asked for 3-3 three, three left, and he could have said no. Air Canada, 8346, runway 27, clear to land. Clear to land at 27, Air Canada, 8346, heavy. Delta 5507, clear to Marconi, VOR. Direct to Marconi, uh, VOR, uh, Delta 5507. Boston Center, Chapman 19, Prescott, flight level 380. Tasman 19, Boston Center, contact, this is reporting 18, flight level 380. Just curious, let's go back to the back end. Oh, they still got the lights on. Maybe they'll turn them off, you know. Well, we are the A1 violators. You got that right, Aviation Geek. Violate is what we do. do their last go through the cabin and they need to get seated so we are about to arrive terrain's not an issue there's the water but you guys know how I like to do it okay we're going to continue our descent to ultimately make uh, 6,000 in BBOG at 210 indicated Thirty degrees left, down to three thousand, delta three eighteen. Okay, let's go three thousand. Pull that out. Three forty-six, welcome to Boston. Contact Boston Grand one two one point matter. Thirty degrees left, three two. All right, here we go. Bills won't, bills won't pay themselves. You got that right, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Let us do this, man. Now that we're doing that, let's uh, obviously start working on the speed. 210 is what we want. And remember the flap extension which is the VFE is 225 we are definitely below that so speed check flaps one we are landing flaps three of course Alright, constraints in the landing system is on. ILS 33 left is confirmed in the primary flight display. So you can see he's basically vectoring us to bend there. So he'll give us probably another uh, change in our heading here shortly. 
and of course we are going to do the right thing and start reducing our speed naturally uh safety speed for flaps 2 is 215 you can see that nose is pretty high speed check flaps 2 you can see there's the field there Now we'll have to get ready to do a drastic turn here. He should be giving us the turn any minute now. Come on, don't overshoot us, man. Tip blue 11, 21, cross Daisy, how to maintain 8,000, LaGuardia altimeter, 3016. LaGuardia 3016, we'll cross Daisy at uh, 8,000, tip blue 1121. Alpha 7215, contact New York approach 120.8. Come on, man, give us our turn. He's flying us right past the, the turn we should have made. Let's Still no uh, turn. Still no turn. Three eighteen, turn left. Three zero zero, direct three three, left localizer. Left three zero zero, join three three left localizer for Delta three one eight. So he shot uh, us past uh, it. Right. So he was a little off, man. Five fifty nine, welcome to Boston on Echo Cross four eight, hold for four left. Contact Boston ground on one two one point nine. Okay, we got localizer. So seven eleven turn right heading one eight zero. Okay, localizer's captured. We are under the glide slope. Boston Center, Delta 2756 with you, 125 miles west of Ponct. Delta 2756. Okay, Boston now we're going to see how far to the right of the localizer we are. It's coming in here, and we're below the localizer, so that's good. And guys, we also need to check one thing really quick here. If we're going to go missed, uh, climb to 1500 right. Turn to 3000 outbound Boston VOR on radio 030 to Waxen, which is uh, 14 nautical Delta miles Delta and hold. Okay. Okay, at this point, we are 13 out. Okay, guys, landing checks. Uh, auto brake is set to medium. The. Uh, can't see it from that view, so let's change it here. The. Alpha Spoilers are armed. Uh, landing information has been received. We are on the localizer under the glide slope. Let's re verify our approach speed. It is 150. Can have 24. Expect the Great Point Vigil runway 24. Okay, 11 nautical miles out. Delta 318 is two miles from Kohas, maintain 3000, tell status, cleared ILS 33 left. Cleared ILS 33 left, Delta 318. American 281, welcome to Boston, right kilo, hold short 4 left, contact Boston ground 121.9. Right kilo, hold shoulder 4 left uh, for American 281, thanks. Alright, there's the glide slope diamond once it almost gets down to where we're fully descending we'll go ahead and get those landing gear out let me get my feet on the rudder pedals all the way Boston Center, Alaska, 13, landing gear is coming down 
Light slope is captured. Lapse three. Approach speed is set. And look at those winds right off the nose. 32, 32 knots. So hopefully as we get lower that will change. Check. There is our radial or above ground level. That's the radial shooting it off. So it's telling us we're 2,300 above the ground, which is only a disparity of 16 feet of the barometric because the touchdown elevation zone is 16 feet. So there you go. So you'll see the two altitudes are similar, but this is burial and this is radial. So we're 2,180 feet above the ground. Hey guys, landing gear is all three green out and confirmed. Flaps are selected to three, indicating three. Auto brake is to medium, and our spoilers are armed. Landing lights are on. Landing checklist is complete. Clearance has been given. Albany VOR then has filed. Maintain 3000 squawk 0040. Clear to Albany. Albany 7 departure radar vector. Albany VOR then has filed. Maintain 3000 departure and squawk 040. American 1923 back current looks like it's going to be runway 2 for departure and ride ready for taxi. All right, guys, let's get it in. Runway 33 left, clear to land, Delta 318. 11 traffic is on 5 miles on the crossing runway. Uh, runway 27, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 27, we'll look out for the traffic up with 7 on So runway 27 runs 55, this way. 07, descend and maintain 3,000 report down to Great Point in sight. Send and maintain 3,000, uh, Delta 57, 55. And we're not doing flaps 55, full, 57, obviously. The island of Great, or Great Point we are sight. not doing that, so we're going to get uh, too low uh, flaps, uh, but no. it's because we're landing in the configuration 3 per the winds. Look at the winds. 295 at 18 at 1,000 feet above. So look at those winds. Okay guys, it's getting ready to be my aircraft. My aircraft, folks. It's gonna be saying all that stuff, speed, 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 because we're right at the cusp. So do not let that fool you with these anabuses. Send via J2. She's pretty uh, stable. Runway 27, 3004, Delta 2756. American 316, cross at dot, at and maintain 111,000, the Burlington altimeter 3011. 500. Check. Has been 19, reset transponder, squawk 4745. 4745 in the box, 10 to 19. 300. Check. 100 above. Check. Too low, flaps. There's that. We're not going to worry about that. Too low, flaps. We're not worried about that. Landing. Too low, flaps. Too low, flaps. 100. Too low, flaps. Too low, flaps. 50. Too low, flaps. 30, 20, read on. Okay. 5507, the Nantucket winds are 320152, 2, runway 24, clear to land. She got a little unstable, but we got an acceptable landing. We'll take it.
All right, welcome to Boston Logan. A little bit of a sloppy one. She got a little unstable towards the end, but that's all right. We knew that would be Hi, the case. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. The local time is 8.47 p.m., and it's currently about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. You can now use your mobile devices. Brake fans on. Until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bins. As all right, and we will be turning to the left, left there. We thank you for flying so, with let's us. get strobe off. Landing lights off. Laps coming up. And let's check out and see where we're at, guys. Let's get the APU on. Let's report clear of the runway. And Boston Tower, or as you were, Boston Center. Delta 318 is clear of runway 33 left. Uh, Holding short Bravo on November. Uh, requesting a taxi to gate uh, Alpha 6. It's probably going to say switch Delta over ground. Delta 318, welcome to Boston. Contact Boston Ground 121.9er. Thanks for ATC. We're over to Boston Ground 121.9er. See you next time, Delta 318. All right. So, good evening, Boston Ground. Delta 318 is clear of runway 33 left on November. Holding short of Bravo. Expecting uh, gate Alpha 6 for taxi. Delta 318 Boston, you're around, uh, thankfully, via Bravo Kilo. Okay, taxi via Bravo Kilo for Delta 318. All right, guys, so we did make it. Uh, APU's on. All that jazz is going. That's extinguished. Uh, brake fans are uh, on to cool the brakes down. And uh, let's make our left here on... Uh, let's see, we'll make our left here on Bravo and follow that round to Kilo. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Beautiful landing, my love. My baby says thank you. Nice, firm landing. Yep. Appreciate all you guys. And uh, it was an acceptable landing. You know, wet runway. And uh, I'm not the best Airbus lander. You know, so you just <laughs> got to keep it real with yourself. So I'll take that. And look at that. Delta 711. I know somebody that rides with that number. I wonder if that's old. Uh, I think Rock, he flies with 242. Greg Hill... He flies with uh, 711, I believe. But welcome, guys, into the place to be. We definitely got her in. Cleared out of the Boston class Bravo airspace by a fly runway heading. Maintain VFR at 3. And we'll take Bravo to Kilo. Bring it in, baby. Bring it on in. Fly runway heading 3000, squad 1301 departure. So welcome to the Boston. Like I said, landing was a little bit. We hit the we hit the ground a little bit and was trying to flare up to make sure we didn't get a hard landing. So the good thing is we didn't get a hard landing. And for me in an Airbus as of late, uh, that's a plus. <laughs> no hard landing. So AP was on and available. We don't need the APU bleeds on as of yet. So pretty busy here, and that's why I was surprised when there was no ATC. But of course, what do they do? They got to come on uh, basically right when I'm landing. You know, we've all been there. Whole flight, basically no ATC, and then you get to where you're going, and next thing you know, bam, they want you to be on ATC. Like, no, don't do this to me. So we're going to be looking for the kilo transition here. Appreciate each and every one of you guys riding along. Stop the time. Time, hour and 32 minutes. We'll say about two or three minutes of that was wasted. So pretty much on time departure, or arrival, rather. Echo. So next turn is Kilo, guys. So that gate is right where we talked it was, man. Now one thing too, if you guys are rolling with Thrustmaster everything, 
I don't know if it's the Thrustmaster, I don't know if I have the sensitivity of an Airbus, but it's, it doesn't do that in Boeing, but the tow brakes are very sensitive, so be aware of that if you've got Thrustmaster TFRPs and uh, go to brake, just FYI, there is a Thrustmaster configuration tool that you can use to work on the dead zone and the sensitivity of your, your uh, rudder pedals there. So Alpha 6 is what we're looking for. See the cargo boys right there. Then this over here will be that K special terminal. Then all terminal will be right over here. So everything calculated and planned. Uh, we got a gift given to us of continuing runway 33 left. And I see somebody else was getting a 33 left option as well. So realistically, you know, we could have taken 27. Um, you know obviously what you would want to do to save fuel but uh, in our case we didn't want any more problems so we were given what we asked for man now the question is is somebody in our spizot Okay, we're just going to slow it up. We're not even going to try for there. We're going to choose this gate right there. And that looks like uh, Alpha 7. So, yeah, I think this is Alpha 6 right here. So, we're good to go. I think Alpha 6 is open and available. Let's look at the approach to it. Okay, that's Alpha 6. Taxi light off. Even though there's no one to blind. But, you know, that's the standard. You turn your taxi light off as you're turning into the ramp. And we do have our automated system there. should be working to tell us where to stop. It recognizes we are an A321, so it gives me confidence that it's working. Okay, we've got about 11 meters, 9 meters. Eight. Okay, stop. Okay, too far, and we're okay. Park and brake is set. Park and drop. Slip us twenty six seventy one. Slip us twenty six seventy one. Both finger on it. Apologies for the delay. We're at Charlie thirty six. Ready for push and start on to Alpha. Engines Alpha. off. Alpha twenty six seventy one. Red beacon off. APU bleed can come on. Oh, Probes off. I have two. And guys, we have an arrival into the Boston Logan International Airport. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for riding along. Let us totally get off of the VATSIM network so we can get our replay situated. And do 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 do. Let's get some jams going here. Okay, jams are going to be going, and you guys know how I do it. Let's get overlay off, as well as you guys no longer need to see this handsome little feller. And we made it in, guys. Another one from gate to gate, which we planned for. Had ATC on the way in. And nice, beautiful flight in our A321neo. Appreciate all y'all riding on board. My baby says beautiful landing. Love you, baby. Uh, nice and firm landing. Alberto says, uh, and Adrian Martinez is in the house. He says, my gente. What's up, Adrian, man? Good to see you. 
uh, just like me basically no aviation geek and then BAM uh, I'm in chat <laughs> you guys are the crazy ones man so let's get into this flight in the replay and just look at everything from a point where we're not stressed out about the flare and all that a little bit further back okay there we go now let's see what type of view we've got okay not bad not bad not a bad view so we'll be able to work with that now let's hope x-plane you know shows the landing lights and all the surfaces because sometimes it won't Sometimes it just won't do it, man. But it does. Okay, landing lights are on, so that's a good sign. Alright, guys. Appreciate you guys riding on board. Uh, Alberto says, sounds good. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, you guys, man. We did it. We did it. And guys, we're going to be getting ready for a DCS stream next. So if you guys are hanging around and you want to see some helicopter ops, I strongly uh, advise you guys in maybe 30 minutes or so, maybe even less than that. Once you guys, I got to switch the controls over. So we'll say about 25, 30 minutes. Check back and we're going to be streaming DCS. Okay, there's where we're trying to straighten everything out. I'm really conscious about the flare. Look at the nose. Brought it down just a little bit. It's it's you know with these Airbus, it's, you know, as soon as you get it wrong, they they drop like a tank. There was that trying to get it straight. Boom! And nose down. Pretty much almost center line, guys. And we kind of danced around. Not a bad landing. Not a bad landing. Again. Airbuses are the hardest one for me to land. Boeings, they're a lot more grittier and grimier, but I definitely usually don't have a problem landing them. So not a bad landing, guys. Let's rock that back a little bit for you fam bams. Y'all know about that old school jazz for you, baby. Y'all know y'all little youngsters don't know about that. Jovencitos no saben de eso. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's right, y'all. Your boy's old, but I love it. Aviation Geek says he'll check back, no doubt. So there's how we're kind of coming in, fighting those wind drafts that we get. We kind of just floated her right there a little bit. And as I was working on a softer test, I was like, I saw the runway leaving. I'm like, all right, little dip, bam. Try to get her down, straighten her out. Captain Mall says, uh, you running this on Max Graphics because I swear your game looks so clean. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is pretty much Max Graphics for a high-end machine, Captain Mall. I appreciate you, man. All right. Let's bring that back. Appreciate it, Captain Mall. You know, I've worked... You guys, if you see my channel two, three, however many years ago, you're going to see the the work has been put in as well as, you know, the hardware, which is, you know, something that costs money. But, you know, uh, it's been a long time in the making to get my graphics to where it's at here. So thank you for saying that. And it definitely hasn't been easy. You know, definitely hasn't been easy. Let's see this thing come right over the runway threshold here. Look at that. See, we're pretty lined up. Trying to work a little bit on that rudder. There's where the float happened. You can hear that retard. And boom. Got her down. All right, let's run that back, y'all. You know we need that. We're gonna we're gonna do both wing replay out of the left side, front and back of the wing. Then we'll be done.
All right, let's do left side in front of the wing. Then we'll do left side behind the wing, guys. And then we are going to call it for now. Aviation Geeks is so nice. Appreciate it. Yeah, guys, so stay tuned. We'll probably jump into some DCS here in a little bit. Just do a little bit of DCS chopper ops. Um, hopefully it's not nighttime flying. But if it is, it'll just mimic what we did here. <laughs> for real, for real. All right, then after this, we'll do one last wing replay from behind the wing and call it. But in the meantime, guys, you know what I like to do. Big up to everybody who rode on board. My lovely wife, thank you for checking in. Love you and the kids. Captain Maul was in the house. Uh, Alberto D was in the house, man. Chris Scott checked in in the house. My man looks like Sir Vilio, if I'm saying that right. 104 for Money was in the house. Rock City, Pilot Porter, Fires, Aviation Geek, my boy Adrian Martinez was in the house um and we said alberto d and if you guys were in the house in the background and didn't say anything big up to you guys and thank you for riding on board of this uh wonderful wonderful flight from raleigh durham to boston logan international guys and who knew we were gonna have atc towards the end but we most certainly indubitably 100 percent did so you guys can see our little exit from the runway there. We'll do the exit and then we'll go back uh, and do the behind the left wing replay. And uh, after that, we'll call it and get ourselves ready for some helicopter ops DCS. And of course, early during the week, we will most certainly be back in X-Plane rocking some Boeings. So I can uh, not worry about that last minute flare. <laughs> see there, we extinguish the strobe. All right, that's all g -O -D. All right, let's come back up here, get our replay window in, and step it back. Okay, we'll step it back pretty far. There we go. And there we go, folks. So you guys enjoy the rest of this replay. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys enjoy it without hearing any more of my wonderful theatrical sounding voice, LOL. <laughs> and once again, guys, God bless each and every one of you. I appreciate you riding on board with your boy. Stay tuned in about, like I said, 25, 30 minutes, check back in and we'll be doing some helicopter ops. Other than that, happy Sunday to you. Happy early Monday morning to you guys. I wish you a successful week. Be kind to yourselves. More importantly, be kind to others and you will reap what you sow and blessings will befall upon you. God bless everyone, guys. Take care.